Goggles or safety glasses must be worn at all times. Wear a lab coat for extra protection. <laughs> the proper attire to wear as far as foot protection is always wear closed toe shoes. That's the proper attire for footwear. Open toe shoes such as sandals and flip flops are prohibited in the lab. Gloves should be worn at all times when you're dealing with chemicals in the lab. It's very important for your protection. Be sure to always wash your hands before entering and leaving the lab. Be sure to never bring food or drink in the lab. For your safety, be sure to always pull your long hair back and never apply makeup while in the lab. All chemical containers must have a legible, firmly attached label showing the contents of the container. Labels on incoming containers of hazardous chemicals must not be removed or defaced. Any labels that are damaged must be immediately replaced with labels containing the same identification, warning, and source of information. When handling two or more chemicals, be sure not to confuse the caps with each other. This could cause contamination. <coughs> Mercury vapors from thermometers which have broken in hot oil baths and ovens are common hazards. Every effort should be made to avoid mercury spills and to clean up spills which do occur. Mercury and mercury compounds should never be disposed of by the sewer. To be safe, whenever spills occur, your teacher should be notified immediately. Immediately clean up broken glass and spilled mercury from the broken thermometer. Do not handle mercury by hand. Place broken glass in appropriate container. Hey, no, man. Drain shall not be used for disposable of chemicals unless specified by the professor. All reactions that produce unpleasant or potentially hazard fume, fumes Vapors or gases must run within local exhaust systems. Care should be taken when storing chemicals. The alphabetical method of storing chemicals presents hazards because chemicals react violently with each other and may be stored in close proximity. Flammables must be stored in separate flammable cabinet. A cabinet is also required for certain acids. The Flynn catalog identifies which acids must be isolated. It is suggested sorting the chemicals into organic and inorganic groupings, which are then further stored into compatible families. Mineral acids, especially nitric acid and sulfuric acid, react violently with organic compounds such as acetone and alcohols. Therefore, care must be taken when these are employed in experiments. Always add acid to water, not water to acid. Some acids form toxic fumes and should be handled in an adequate fume hood while wearing the appropriate personal protective equipment.
active metals such as sodium and potassium are stored under oil. They react violently with water and may ignite spontaneously if exposed to the moisture in the air. Toxic fumes are given off during combustion. Protective clothing should be worn while handling these materials. Most organic liquids are quite flammable and should be handled as you might handle gasoline. Hydrocarbons are quite flammable. Ethers are exceedingly flammable and are not used routinely in your laboratory. Alcohol are somewhat less flammable than hydrocarbons or ethers should be handled with care and should not be heated on a flame or a hot plate. When working with chemicals, gloves should be worn to protect the hands. Sometimes chemicals can get into gloves if the gloves have a puncture that is not noticed or if a sharp object punctures the glove. The gloves used in the lab, lab are strong but not strong enough to resist puncture by sharp objects. When chemicals or cuts occur, wash the wound, then apply... <laughs> The gloves used in the lab are strong enough but not strong enough to resist puncture by sharp objects. When chemicals or cuts occur, wash the wound. Then apply first aid from the first aid kit located in the lab. Notify your teacher of the accident for further medical instructions. When working with chemicals, protective eye covering should be maintained at all times. When this deterrent fails and the eyes make contact with a chemical, the eye wash equipment should be used in the following manner. The eyelids should be pushed back and water run over the eyeballs for at least three minutes. The student may need help to the eye wash station and with its use since the student's vision may be impaired. Ready? When large spills occur and chemicals are in contact with large areas of the body, the safety shower should be utilized. You must remove all of your clothes, then once under the shower nozzle, <laughs> When a fire breaks out, proper use of a fire extinguisher is essential. Locate the fire extinguisher, stand 8 to 10 feet away, pull the pin, point the hose towards the base of the fire, and squeeze the trigger. Do not go in the vicinity of the fire even if it looks like the fire is out since it could reignite at any time. It is the responsibility of every student to familiarize themselves with the evacuation route. In case of a large fire or chemical gas accident, students should vacate the building.